Good afternoon, folks. Going to make a big claim here, but I'll bring receipts, not just for the science, but because it was predicted to happen. The sun absolutely triggered this record hurricane barrel entering the Caribbean now. Before we dive into some specifics, let's re-watch this video from February with special attention paid to the prediction at the end. We'll come back to recap and dig a bit deeper afterwards. Enjoy. When the sun unleashes a coronal mass ejection, a CME, and it impacts the earth, it excites the magnetic field and triggers electromagnetic activity below throughout the atmosphere. This video is from NASA, and the purpose of the video was meant to describe some of the ways that the sun drives the winds and the ocean currents. It does this by impacting the direct heating of the atmosphere and the electric currents of the global electric circuit. But even NASA's video doesn't cover or even mention that this forcing extends to nearly every aspect of the weather. We have seen the hundreds of papers on how solar activity impacts wind, ocean activity, clouds, rain, lightning, snow, temperature, humidity, and so it should not be surprising that it also impacts the strongest storms in the world, the tropical systems, hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons. This was one of the key aspects of one of the articles we featured earlier today in the morning show. The electrical phenomena of the atmosphere is gaining more and more attention, where it was once thought to all be about temperature directing pressure in the air masses. Scientists now know it is a much more dynamic process. For those who are new here, in Chapter 5 of our textbook, there is a good deal of information about the sun's impact on major tropical storm systems, and extra tropical storms for that matter. There are studies that confirm this connection with solar flares, solar wind data, solar energetic proton storms, and of course, geomagnetic storms from when the CMEs impact our planet. And as they discover this more and more, it extends to the extra tropical regions and even severe thunderstorms over land. Many of you remember Ferris Wald, who won the National Science Championship for proving that coronal hole streams and tropical cyclones were related. A pretty amazing feat for a middle school student. And since our textbook came out, there have been several follow-up studies that only bolster the previously discovered connection between the sun and tropical systems. Ones like this have even suggested it's not just the formation and intensification of those storms, but they're likely tracks to landfall that are impacted by the sun. Other studies dive deep into specific regions of the ocean and find all the same, while also driving into the mechanistic action of how it all works. So this morning's paper, while exciting to see, was not unexpected. Indeed, there are no countervailing studies in the last several years questioning this connection, and yet, the sun's impact on storms remains outside of all climate models. It's a shame. But whether it is a solar flare juicing up the atmosphere, the solar wind pressure forcing Van Allen electrons downward, or the geomagnetic storm activity spreading across the globe, the global electric up and down circuit becomes excited. And as we discussed in a video just a few days ago, that electric circuit activity impacts the pressure cells, wind, clouds, and more. Later this year, the sunspot cycle will be peaking as hurricane season rolls around in the Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, and we will all get an excellent opportunity to see just how much the sun works these great storms in real time. I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone. Well, it's hurricane season now. We had the first serious geomagnetic storm of the period on June 28th, and during its impact on the atmosphere, just as predicted, just as we've been showing for several years, it triggered the first serious hurricane. And serious doesn't really do it justice. It was the furthest east storm at this time of year to form, the earliest Category 4 on record in the Atlantic Basin, and the strongest to ever hit these islands. Furthermore, its pace of intensification is utterly unprecedented. As of midday today, it's still intensifying. So let's go a bit deeper on the background. The papers on solar storm forcing of tropical activity have been more numerous in the last decade than in the entire history of science that came before. Once the door was opened, it was like a flood, with literally every study looking at the topic finding the same thing. Solar storms impact the tropical systems in a significant way, with special attention being paid to the geomagnetic aspect. That's what we just had happen this past week. 
Studies have even gone back in time and found major correlations like with Hurricane Katrina. The super outbreak in 2015 during a similarly strong solar storm surge, the triple storm system in 2017 that followed the largest solar storms of cycle 24, and even elsewhere in the Pacific, where Haiyan broke records on the heels of a powerful solar flare and magnetic crochet event in the atmosphere resulting from it. Also noteworthy, the tropical storm Chris has formed during this period this week, currently pounding Mexico. And by the way, the average third named storm of the year usually happens around early August. This has been the quintessential event we were talking about in literally every way you can slice it. Remember, every tropical storm is impacted by the global electric circuit, and every aspect of space weather affects that circuit. Four months ago, we said to watch for major hurricanes to be triggered by solar storms, and that's literally what is happening as we speak. Solar maximum is in full stride. Hurricane season is here. Expect more in the months ahead. Subscribe here for the daily updates, and I'll see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.